from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering VMworld 2018. Brought to you by VMware and its ecosystem partners. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is theCUBE, the leader in live tech coverage. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. This is VMworld 2018, our ninth year of VMworld at theCUBE. We got two sets here. VMware, unbelievable, they, they built up the sets. We have great guests, 94 guests this week. I'm Dave Vellante with my co-host, David Floyer. Emmett Kosmerik is here, he's the field CTO uh, for data protection sales at Dell EMC. And he's joined by Christoph Bertrand, good friend who's an analyst now at ESG. Gentlemen, great to see you. Thanks for coming on theCUBE. Thanks for having us. You're welcome, Emmett, let's start with you. Uh, I mean, it is, this has been like two years in a row now. Data protection is the hottest topic cloud, things evolving from just a virtualized world to this multi-cloud world, people rethinking their whole data protection practices. What are you seeing? Give us the update. Well, absolutely. I mean, there's a huge focus as a whole now around data protection. You've got rising things like ransomware and attacks out there that people are really evaluating, you know, are they truly protected? You're also now seeing the cloud being leveraged more and more as a way to integrating with your backups, using it for long-term retention, using it as a target for DR. So what's really interesting from that adoption rate, if you want to actually look at where we were a year ago, specifically with AWS, for example, we were driving three petabytes a month for consumption with our data protection products into the Amazon cloud. Today, that's up to 20 petabytes a month. So we're seeing a massive adoption by our customers in that market there. And what's really interesting when you start to actually double click on that, when you look at the efficiencies we provide for our customers with our deduplication technology by shrinking that total footprint down that they actually consume, there's a lot more economics of scale that they get to benefit from as a result of that. And you, when you talk about going from three petabytes to 20 petabytes, you're talking about using the cloud as a, a data protection target, right? Yep, right. absolutely. Long-term retention or now with our cloud DR capabilities and the ability for customers to actually fail over and burst into the cloud, another prime example of where we're driving that up. Another example as well as protecting workloads in the cloud. You know, recently we were able to launch and customers can deploy through either the uh, AWS marketplace or the Azure marketplaces, data domain virtual on object storage. So not only are you getting the benefit of that market leading protection capability of data domain as a software defined instance, but you now have a cloud centric running on object storage. So even more cost efficiencies that it's bringing for our customers. So Christoph, what, do you, what is your research showing in terms of adoption of cloud in a data protection context, whether it's as a target or, what, what, do, you, what do your research show? Yeah, absolutely, I mean, first of all, you know, AWS, we know from our respondents to our surveys, have doubled in usage in the past four years. Uh, so it's, it's crazy, right? Uh, so definitely a lot of adoption. As far as data protection goes, a couple of uh, different perspectives. One of them is, uh, of course, the quest to always reduce costs uh, as a major IT spending initiative, and uh, the fact that cloud can help, but can also be, if you don't pay attention, uh, an area of additional costs. So uh, you tie that back to data protection, definitely being used more as a, uh, more and more as a target, as a natural extension to your on-premise environment, uh, very naturally. But also, in some cases, uh, as a you know, cloud native, uh, as cloud native workloads evolve, well, there are some changes in how you protect data. So, uh, lots of evolution. I think we're really in a world now of hybrid cloud, for sure, and hybrid data protection, uh, which is why you need to really think about how do you extend the great capabilities you built on premise and make them work in a cloud environment. Uh, data deduplication is one of the big areas that I've always been very interested in because, you know, I've always been told, follow the money. Well, the money is where the storage, where there's compute. And the less you use, the less you're going to pay. And I think that's really what you have to look at as you're deploying solutions uh, that leverage cloud. How do you optimize uh, the uh, spend and how do you make sure that you meet your SLAs? Let's talk about the ROI, a simple equation, benefit over cost. And traditionally, the CFO would look at the benefit of data protection as I got to do this because my CIO said I have to or we'll lose data, so all right, go ahead. So there's been a huge focus on the denominator and still is. Mm -hmm. is. Is that changing? Is the value component, the numerator changing in any way, shape, or form as a result of cloud with maybe new use cases beyond just back up and restore or is it still kind of hardcore, reduce the cost? Your thoughts, Emmett? Um, well, I think it still is always going to come down to dollars and cents, right? And that is a huge aspect of what we're trying to do and accomplish across the board as organizations and what our customers are looking to do. If they can drive down that total cost, use less resources, it's a good thing for them. 
However, do you have drivers around compliance? They have drivers around needs there. And what we're seeing is the cloud allows us to do some very interesting things. Cheap and deep storage in object allows us to have some really interesting use cases there. And you layer on top of that then deduplication and using and deploying less resources as a whole to protect that. There's added benefits across the board. What also gets very interesting now is we're, you know, we're at VMworld. So when we're talking about VMC on AWS, we can use these same services and we can use S3 as that object bucket from that native Amazon when in VMware at cloud. So being able to take those protection capabilities that our customers were leveraging on-prem with our proven solutions, deploy them up in VMC, and still leverage also that power of having that S3 bucket on top of deduplication with it, it equates to less cost for the customer and more efficiencies overall. So uh, can you give some examples of how you can exploit that data in the cloud? You know, do more with it than just have it there to, uh, to recover from. Is, is that an area that's focused for you? Or can you give some examples? So absolutely, you know, one of the areas we're starting to see more and more is customers wanting to take data and replicate it up in the cloud and then redeploy it up there. So you look at database instances and their capabilities of having that native integration we can do with Oracle. And then being able to then take that RMAN backups and redeploy it as an RMAN instance up in AWS or up in Azure, it makes things very interesting for customers on how they want to deploy it holistically. Mm -hmm. The other side of this is, you know, it, it comes down more to how do I want to leverage the cloud? Do I want to use it for long-term retention to eliminate tape? Do I want to use it as an N plus one target? Do I want to use it as an alternative option for DR? To actually burst in and then pay for as I need it, you know, by the drip, those resources when I need to have that DR event. But one of the key aspects there that we really focus in on, it's not just about failing in, it's about failing back, because yeah. our customers have made this investment on-prem. They want to come back eventually, so one of the key aspects with our technology is we have orchestrated fail back as part of the process to help them get back on-prem when it's appropriate. Christophe, are there like hidden costs that customers should be thinking about mm -hmm. with regard to data protection, and, and what are those? Well, so if you look at data protection in general, and I'll, I'll just start you know, from the, the SLA perspective. First of all, it's important to remind people that about 15%, at least of the people we surveyed, which are you know, traditional uh, mid-market mid and enterprise organizations, uh, do not want to see any downtime, okay? So that's the first thing. And then you go to the one hour bar, and you're probably at 60, 70%, right? So that's the first statement, because you're going to have to pay at some point for that SLA. Now you look at cloud more specifically and how you can optimize uh, the, the costs. I mentioned data duplication. As a matter of fact, we've validated uh, that the uh, data EMC technology can limit the costs significantly uh, when uh, using either the IDPA uh, appliance or the combination of software solutions. Um, we have a couple of reports on that. Uh, if we look at a survey of about, uh, or looking at the telemetry from about 15,000 customers, we were somewhere between 51 to 81% of costs uh, savings. Uh, meaning the technology has really helped. Why? Compute is one issue, to answer your question. So how do you find a way with the technology to limit the amount of compute so that the virtual machines or whatever servers you use in the cloud do not use up too much of that compute? Uh, the other is of course storage. Uh, in the case of Dell EMC, I think we've identified close to 71, 72% savings of S3 storage because of the great deduplication that's built in. So these are the costs I would look at, look at again, Look at the bill, look at the ingress, the egress, and look at what you're consuming, and where can you apply technology that's going to still allow you to deliver on the SLAs, never forget the SLAs, pay a little more if you have to, uh, because when you talk about the cost of data protection, there's also the cost of not protecting data, and that can be much higher. But look at, look at those dimensions and, and you'll do well, and that's where the technology kicks in. So, so to just kind of double click on something that Christoph just said there, you know, their findings at ESG showed that we are saving on average 73% on S3 costs for our customers when they leverage our technology. You think of the fact that we on a monthly basis right now are driving 20 petabytes of consumption in the cloud. That 73% savings, what would that look like if it wasn't there? So that is real dollars and cents that these customers, if they weren't leveraging these technologies, would be forced to actually be paying out of their pocket. What are the customers actually deploying? What's the solution look like that allows them to get that 73% savings? So it's going to come down to what are, what's the use case we're trying to solve, right? So I, I mentioned we have the capability of doing cloud DR, to burst in uh, from that aspect. We have the ability to actually le leverage the cloud for long-term retention, doing, using it as a target either via the data domain for cloud tiering itself, 
or if we want to just send it right directly out to object storage in the cloud, we can use our native built-in capabilities to do that as well. And then finally, protecting workloads in the cloud. We can deploy our technology as software-defined instances through the marketplaces and run it on object storage. So that's really allowing customers to have the options of what's the use case we're trying to solve and making sure they're using the right tool to do it. Mm, great. Are you getting some uh, uh, demand for people who want to actually back up on their own site uh, applications running in the, in the cloud itself? Are you, can you support so, that? So, then that's a great question. So what we're seeing in certain areas, they want to do replication back. They want that on-prem to be that N plus one and right. have that there. And so it's a great area of when using data domain virtual in the cloud and replicating back to an IDPA or our traditional data domain appliances allows them that capability and we still give them the ability to have a central data management plane across the board. Doesn't matter if they're deployed solutions from a remote site aspect, from their data centers, or up in multi-clouds, they have that one visibility in view. Excellent. Yeah. Christoph, what are you seeing in terms of the big gaps between what the, the customers are expecting in terms of the data protection experience and what the industry has traditionally been able to deliver, and then, of course, Emmett, I'm going to ask you how you're closing those gaps, so <laughs> think about that. Well, so, so there are a few changes. Uh, certainly I've been part of you know, the industry as, a, as an actor for you know, many, many years, so now being on the other side as an analyst, it's very interesting to see, uh, is it from a side different prism. Uh, I will say, first of all, I would call this the SLA gap. Uh, I was mentioning those trends about what is really acceptable. Well, the real question is, do you really deliver against those SLAs? More interestingly, it's not just for mission critical data. Our research indicates that even non-mission critical data has become very sensitive to SLAs, meaning data loss and downtime, to keep it simple from a data protection standpoint. So I would say uh, that's the first gap. Do you have, uh, do you meet those SLAs at least for your critical applications and then do you meet it overall? Uh, the other thing is there is a, a lack of coherency across um, the various applications and workloads you're trying to protect. So having a solution that is as broad as possible in many ways, or at least having the processes and the technologies in place that are coordinated enough that you're going to have that coherency is going to be very important because guess what happens when something happens and typically in a data center it's going to be some sort of hardware failure or human error, you name it, uh, or cyber attack, big, big thing these days. Uh, well, you're going to fail over to a cloud environment. You'd better have all of your applications come back in exactly the right order. You'd better have that work, that run book uh, clearly worked out. Uh, so I think that could be the second areas of gaps uh, as far as having your backups, having recent backups and high availability or near high availability. Do you have the processes? Do you know what to bring back in what sequence. So any solution that's going to give you the ability to orchestrate uh, is going to be very key. So I think there are gaps still today, but the good news is there's a lot of technology that's happening here. Uh, so we're seeing it from um, Dell EMC with different ways to consume it, whether you want to consume software or hardware, combination thereof, or appliances, uh, or converge or hyper-converge systems. So lots of options. So the, the, the gaps are closing, they're still there, and guess what? We, 10 years from now, we'll still be talking about data protection. Yeah, yeah, yeah no doubt. That's great analysis. So Emmett, um, it's consistent with what you're hearing from customers, and you know, give us a little sort of glimpse as to how you're closing that gaps. No, absolutely. So you see a range from customers. You see the ones that, we just want to go to cloud. Okay, well what does that mean to you? I don't know, but we need to go to cloud. Yeah. And then you got the ones who are actually going through the process of actually cloud architecting and going and looking at the applications and determining how they want to do it. And then one of the things I love about VMC and VMware as a whole now in AWS is it's being able to bring that power of that trusted performance of VMware up into that cloud experience so that customers are able to use the tools that they've been comfortable with, that they've designed with, that they trust to now also run in the public cloud. And what we've done specifically in that area is we were one of the first uh, manufacturers and vendors out there to support protecting workloads in VMC. Mm -hmm. And so continuing with on what Michael's mission is and working together closely under the Dell Technologies family to make sure we're coherently integrating in and, and bringing more protection capabilities for what our customers need up there as a whole. Shifting back though slightly, looking at public cloud just across the board, it's about making sure that we're hitting those gaps, that orchestration on the failback. There's been the capability for people to fail into the cloud. I mean, Amazon released a tool to do that conversion and cut over. But the gap that existed there was the fail back. The other gap that existed is there are certain workloads that just aren't suitable 
to run on AWS. Linux instance VMs that are over two terabytes, they just won't work. So making sure that we notify customers when they try and select something like that on the front end, that hey, this isn't a supported workload, so they're not trying in a DR scenario to be like, yeah, why yeah. is this not coming up? <laughs> so putting those, you know, those uh, pieces in place for our customers so that they have the ability to know on the front end and also have that workflow back has been one of the really key areas we've been focused on. Awesome, Emma, awesome. thanks so much for sort of bridging the, the world of technology and customer. We really appreciate the explanation. Christoph, great analysis. I always appreciate having ESG on. You guys do great work, so thank you guys for coming on. Absolutely. All right, keep it right there, everybody. We'll be back. Day three, VMworld 2018. You're watching theCUBE. We'll be right back. Thank <laughs> you.